bring that offering, that sacrifice of praise unto the Lord. Let's bring that sacrifice of praise and worship that's acceptable before the Lord. Hallelujah. Deba, nobody can do it for you. But if you don't, the rocks will cry out. Are you going to let the rocks take your place in worshiping Him? Bringing forth that sacrifice of praise unto Him? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Lord Jesus, we draw near. We draw near. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. You know, if we draw nigh to him, he draws nigh to us. <laughs> hallelujah. How many want God to be up close to you? Hallelujah. Draw near to him and he'll draw near to you. Oh, praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy, Lord. And we worship you, Lord, with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our might, with all of our being. Oh, God, with everything that is within us, Lord, we worship you and we praise you, Father. Lord, I just thank you, Father, that not one person will hold anything back on you, but we will pour ourselves out completely and totally upon you. Father, that we will abandon ourselves. Father, when we worship you, we will abandon our ability, oh God. And we will worship you in spirit and in truth. We will pour ourselves out on you, oh Lord. Oh Father, more than we do anything in this life, anything in this world, oh God. We give you the first fruit. We give you the offerings of our first fruit. We give you, Father, the, the, the first part of our strength, the first part of our ability, the first part of our excitement, the first part part of everything oh god we pour it out on you lord jesus and not on other things father i just praise you god that you bring together a people that are passionate for you i thank you father for every person in this place father god that has set their heart to worship you to know you to behold you to see you father that have committed that you are their god and and they are your people father and they will not turn aside to the left or the right but they will keep themselves oh god in your glory and in your anointing Father, we just thank you, God, that you're bringing together a hungry people. Father, that will be like Joel's army, that will walk shoulder to shoulder, and they will not thrust one another, but they will stand together in unity. They will stand together, and they will fight the battle. Father, they will run through a city. They will leap over a wall. Father, they will break through a troop. There will be nothing that holds your people back. Father, we stand, Lord God, in the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. And we march, Father, to see your glory, your glory, your glory revealed in this earth today and in this hour, oh God, where Satan would try to hold back the mouths and the lives and the freedom of your people, oh God. But we will stand and we will declare your glory by your mighty Holy Spirit that lives within us because we yield ourselves to you, oh God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, that you just strengthen every person in this place to go deeper tonight, to go deeper. Oh God, to shake off any heavy bands that could be holding them back, to shake off anything, Father, that could be trying to bring division in their spirit, that could try to be bringing confusion to them. Oh, Father, any lie of the enemy that set itself against any person, Father, in this place, Lord, we break it tonight, Father, and we just thank you, God, that tonight we're going to go from glory to glory. Father, every young person, Lord Jesus, even the babies that are in this place, Lord Jesus, we just thank you that you touch them by your mighty Holy Spirit and you brand them. Oh, Father, you put your mark upon them, Lord, tonight, Father. Oh, Lord Jesus, that you pierce their little hearts, Father, from this moment on by the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, Father, that they will serve you with all of their might and with all of their soul and with all their strength and with all their mind and with all their ability, with everything, oh God. Oh, hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this generation that is coming up. Oh, Father, we thank you for this generation that is coming up, Lord Jesus, that they be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of his might. 
Oh God, that they be a young people and a people, Father, that will not look to their own ability. Because, Lord, they're coming up in an hour, Father, where persecution to the, to the name of the gospel of Jesus Christ is, being, is in every country. And, Lord, even in this country, Lord, we can see some, some very severe things happen in, in a very short time. And, God, our young people need to be strengthened. And we need to prepare them. Lord, I ask you to strengthen the parents to prepare their children to stand like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the middle of the fire and not be burned. Refuse to bend their knee or to bow to any ungodly thing. Refuse to call evil good and good evil. Oh God, mighty in you, holy people, righteous people, separated unto you, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let us, Father, as adults, gather around our young people and prepare them for this hour. Prepare them for this day, God, that they must walk. They must walk through the fire and not be burned. They must pass through the waters and the floods will not overpass them. Oh God, a people, a young people, a people that will trust in you. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, for the fire of the Holy Ghost. We thank you, Jesus, that we can go through anything. Hallelujah. Through the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to your name, Lord. Glory to your name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. I just want to, first of all tonight, I want to give everybody opportunity to sow into the kingdom. With everything that the Father has blessed you with, you get the opportunity to come before him and bless him out of what he's blessed you with. And, and then you can take it deeper. You can be like the Macedonians who learned about the special grace, this grace that he provides the seed to the sower. They learned about it to the point that they gave themselves poor for the kingdom because in all abandonment, they took a hold of the fact that God would supply the seed to the sower and the bread to the eater. And whatever we had need of, he would supply it. And so they, they took a hold of this grace and they watched God perform this miracle in them and move them out to walk on the water with finances and see the glory of God revealed. Now I'm going to tell you, people want to step out into this grace and they do and they do it with a, with, with a pure heart and, and just like, God, here I am because I tell you what, this is the most giving church I believe on the planet the most giving people, the most abandoned people. I don't think there's any people that, that just pour themselves any more into the kingdom than the people right here in the abiding place. Every person in the abiding place really means they're abiding in the vine. They mean that with all their heart. Now, is there hindrances that come out against that? Yes. Is the, does the enemy try to move you? Yes. When you give in all abandonment, does the enemy come against you and fight your finances? Yes. Yes. And that's where... We fight the good fight of faith. We realize that we're in a war and no man that wars entangles himself in affairs of this life, but we get take a hold of the things of the kingdom of God and we move and we push things forward. We don't back up, we push forward. We don't back up, we push forward. So when the enemy comes to try to take from us, steal from us, because we've tried with all of our heart by the Holy Spirit to step out, we begin to step out into another grace and giving or another grace and, and, and speaking and declaring the Word of God or uh, uh, whatever God's having you to do. You know, you step out more in God and the enemy wants to push you back over into your little corner and say, no, 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 you're not going anywhere. He'll, he'll bring down all kinds of stuff to try to shut you up, stop you, and, 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 and make you unable to do what God's called you to do if you let him. But you've got to realize, you've got to realize that there's a battle afoot. And God's equipped you to fight it through the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. So you don't weary in well-doing. You don't weary in it. Because you will receive, you will receive the blessing. You will be blessed. 
You will receive the inheritance. You will take a hold of it if you don't weary and you don't faint. So don't faint. Don't faint. Say, I'm going deeper. Say, okay, enemy, you attacked me in this way. You know, and I look at it as a battle. I strategize times. I think it's by the Holy Spirit. I'm like, okay, you came out over here. I'm going to come out over here. I'm going to get stronger. I'm going to get bolder. I'm going to go deeper. I'm going to do more. Okay, you, you, you did that. Okay, that's 10 people I got to go witness to right now. Lord, show me where they're at. You know, let me go shake up the enemy's kingdom. Don't, don't let the enemy make you afraid of him and push you back. You make him afraid of you when you get up in the morning. You make him afraid that you woke up for him to say, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, hallelujah. Because the greater one lives on the inside of us and he enables us to do all things. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Through Christ who strengthens us. Oh, praise you, Jesus. So I want everybody to just come and bring that sacrifice of praise, that sacrifice of worship. Come and honor the Lord with the things that he has blessed you with. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise you, Jesus. 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 Glory and honor to your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hi. Yes. <laughs> Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord Jesus. Ooh, glory to your name, Father. Glory to your name. Father, we just thank you for the rivers of living water pouring forth in this place. If you guys get quiet, I'm going to come out and shake you. You're not going to get quiet on me tonight. We're, we're worshiping the Lord, and we're here together. We're here together as the army of the Lord, standing against the wiles of darkness. We're going to push this thing forward. We're going to go after the things of the kingdom like never before. I tell you what, we live in troublesome times. We live in troublesome times. The things that are, that are stirring up in the Middle East and the things that are going on, just watching Bible prophecy take place so rapidly that, I mean, I don't see how it can be much longer. It, I mean, for things to move as rapidly as they are. Jesus could come at any moment because things can take place like that. It's no problem for God. But to see more Bible prophecy taking place to where the end times are here. They're here. How we can go through another generation is beyond my, my thinking as I see what God is doing. But God so loves the world. He so loves the world that he's, he's going after that harvest. He's going after that harvest. But at any time, he could, he could put in the sickle and reap that final harvest before, before Jesus comes to gather us all away to live with him for eternity. And he brings forth that great wrath upon the earth. And he deals with the sin and the ungodliness. And our nation, unfortunately, has come under that ungodliness from the leadership all the way throughout the country. Of course, you know, when the people were wicked in the, in, in, back in First and Second Kings and First and Second Samuel, when the people were wicked, God always rose up a wicked leader to lead them into a bunch of trouble because God didn't want to lead his righteous men into a bunch of trouble. So he rose up a wicked leader to lead them into a bunch of hard times. So preventure they would repent. They would see the mess that they got themselves in and they would turn from their wicked ways. The mercy of God, the goodness of God that allows those things to come to bring repentance. And the righteous suffer along with them. But that's okay. You've got to remember Isaiah chapter 3. Say to the righteous, it will, be, it will be well with them, for they will eat of the fruit of their doings. God will take care of you. He will take care of you. 
It's not about what they can do to this body. It's not about what they can do to this body. They can't touch what's on the inside. They can't touch the spirit. They can't touch what God's done on the inside. I mean, you just think about it. Are you ready to die tomorrow? If you were going to die tomorrow, or say you were going to die next week, or, or just say maybe, Provincial, you have one more year upon this earth before you stand before God and you hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. One more year. Just think about what would you want to do with that one more year? How would you want to spend that one more year? Because we don't know. We don't, I mean, in one year, I mean, it could all be just ripe for the picking in one year. Looking at how fast our country's going down the tube, where they, I mean, yesterday, the president of the United States of America put another um, law into place demanding that we accept what is evil and call it good and say that there can be no um, speaking against or hindrance as far as you have to hire, you have to uh, allow, you know, homosexual unions in, in, in a Holy Ghost Pentecostal church, and they force it by the government, or they shut you down, or they even imprison you. The, our government, the government of the United States of America, that much blood was shed for to bring forth freedom in this country, that we can believe what we believe in our hearts before God, and that no man is to be able to tell us, to give us a gag order. That's, that's, you know, what our country is all about, is that we have the freedom to worship. And now we have a president that says that, no, you have to accept this evil, you have to call it good, you, you have to be a part of it. Well, I tell you what, as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I don't care what it costs me, I'm going to stand and declare the word of the Lord. And if we don't call out sin, if we don't take our responsibility and call out sin, and if we don't declare what sin is before the people, how will they know to repent? We will be like those, those judges and the kings and the, the prophets back in the Old Testament that were liars, that went with the people just so they could protect themselves. They lived for the moment, they lived for the day so they could have what they wanted in this life. And they're gone. And they're, they're spending eternity in hell. And they got a greater judgment and damnation upon them, the scripture says, because they were the ones responsible to declare evil is evil. I will stand and I will speak the word of the Lord in the United States of America. And I hope every one of you will jump up right after the leaders of God and say no to sin, no to evil. We declare it sin just as much as we declare adultery, fornication, lasciviousness, lasciviousness, lying, cheating. All of these things, we declare them sin. And we will not excuse them. But we will just stand and we will declare it. I mean, I'm going to have to be taken out of the way for wickedness to abound upon the earth. Wickedness is not going to abound on this earth until I'm taken out of the way. Hallelujah. And Jesus Christ has a church. He has a church that's going to stand up for what is righteous and what is true. And they're not going to be moved. They're not going to allow the enemy to push them back and to tell them that they're going to follow the crowd. They're going to be like the, the cattle put through the chute and branded. And they're just going to follow along that same path that Society demands and tries to train our children in, in, in that social network called education, called the school, that social network that's there to just try to brainwash our children and not teach them the laws and the principles of God. When school was started, school in this nation was started to teach children how to read the Word of God. It was started by the church to teach children that were illiterate how to read the Word of God so they could go deeper in the realms of God. Our universities were started to teach people to translate the Word of God. They were universities, the beginning, were started to train up ministers to, to go out and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Men that knew the word of God, that it was in them by the time they got done with their education. And are we going to stand and allow the enemy to push back? Are we going to allow sin in our life that would open the, the, the door to the enemy to come in like a floodgate? 
Because I'm going to tell you right now, that's how this is happening in our country today is because the church, you look 10 years ago, the church began to come out one right after the other, the ungodliness that they were involved in and that they allowed in their life. And it's without a doubt, as you begin to move forward the kingdom of God, Satan will come out against you. But you have to take a step forward in the Holy Ghost. Take a step forward, take a hold of God and say, I will not be moved. I may ha the enemy may have come against me on this side or that side, but it's not happening again because now I'm aware of his devices and I'm going after it and I know... I know all I have to do is to get lost over in the realms of the Holy Ghost and I will be strengthened with all the might and the power that Jesus was strengthened with. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's look at that in Hebrews. Look at this, Hebrews. Chapter 9, verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through... Who through the eternal spirit, listen to this, Jesus, the blood of Jesus Christ was offered up how? Through the eternal spirit. Who offered himself without spot, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. There is so much right there in that one scripture. You could take that and run in the kingdom of God and live in all purity right there. Because Jesus, he couldn't even die and offer himself up spotless except by the Holy Spirit. He depended on the Holy Spirit to enable him to offer himself up. Hallelujah. Through the Spirit. Through the Spirit of God offered up himself without spot to God. This, this God, this Jesus, not another Jesus, not a Jesus that's being preached all across this nation that you can live any way you want to, but because one time you said, oh, Lord, forgive me of my sins. I ain't barely even got out. I'm a sinner. And, and barely even got out any repentance. But, but, you, but you, you know, somebody came to you and they said, say these words after me, and you said these words after you, after them, and you might go to church one or two times here or there. You, you sit in a church that you feel comfortable in, and because you think you're in that church that you're doing what God's called you to do, and, and you're going to make it to heaven, that's, that's another Jesus. That's not the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. He purged your conscience from dead works to serve the living God, to serve him. Let's look over here in Peter. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Praise you, Father. I'm having a good time whether you are or not. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And I'm trying to find where I was thinking of being. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, we'll just start right here in 1 Peter. We went over there, so we'll start right here in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. And here, here's the key right here. Here's something that we deal with continually. Wherefore, verse 13, everybody there? Amen. Amen. Okay, you're getting too quiet on me, and I know I'm going fast, and you have to be quiet to be able to listen, but, you know, get an amen in there somewhere. You know, I, I take a moment to find a scripture. Say amen. Do something. Say Hallelujah. Say, I'm going after it. Say, I'm not sitting back and letting the enemy have any place in me in Jesus' name. I'm, I'm going to fight the good fight of faith. Hallelujah. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind and be sober. You know, the mind's a big thing we've got to deal with. And we're going to talk about the mind just a little bit because that's what gets most people in trouble is the mind. So we're going to, we're going to talk a little bit about that. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, as obedient children, what are we to obey? The living word, hallelujah. The living word and those that have rule over you. Amen? You're supposed to be submitted somewhere in a body to a leadership that can look into your life 
and help you walk out this glorious liberty. Thank you, Jesus. I know I, I need to be in church. I, you know, being in church three, four, five times a week, I need it. I sit there and I'm like, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. And I think, oh my goodness, I know that person isn't as strong as I am in the Lord as far as yielding themselves to the Holy Spirit. And how in the world do they think that they can walk outside of this fellowship, outside of the church, of the body, coming together in unity, hearing the encouragement and the correction from, from the leadership? How can they do it? Well, I'm going to tell you, that's why they fall flat on their face. That's, why, that's what happens. So you don't want to be outside. You want to you be diligent in being obedient because the scripture says to come together the more as the day approaches. And they were talking, when they said that, there was two services a day. Two services every day. And they said, come to, together the more. I guess they said, you know, just, they were thinking just all move in together. You know, but... We need each other as the body of Jesus Christ. We need to, to strengthen each other and encourage each other, exhort one another into walking in obedience and walking in truth. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance, but as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy. Now how... People want to interpret that. God's a holy God, and he's not coming down to our level. As he is holy, we are to be holy. How holy is he? What is God doing? You know, what, just think about this. What did the, did the disciples give themselves to day and night to study? The New Testament? No. The Old Testament. They gave themselves to search the scripture, the Old Testament. Some people need to read a Leviticus. You need to read it. You go through it, and you, you, you know, the first time, and it might be a little tough, go through it again. I mean, you, you're going to give an account for the book of Le Leviticus because Leviticus really talks about the holiness of God. And see, the Holy Spirit enables us to be holy like God. And God doesn't change. It seems to me that there's a scripture called, He's the same today, yesterday, and forever, and He never changes. He's a holy God. He's not contemporary to this time. He hasn't changed His mind about who He is. He didn't change His style. He didn't get a new hairdo. And on and on and on and on. He didn't conform to the world. And neither are we. Neither are we too. We need to really look in the mirror of the word. Not in the mirror. And not so much concerned about what we have on, but concerned about what's on the inside. Because I tell you what, you can look on the outside of the people and if you have any discernment and you can see what's on the inside. Because the outside is going to conform to what's on the inside. Because when you're so in love with Jesus, you're not going to hold on to your stubbornness and say, ah, yeah, yeah. holiness preacher, you know, you can't, take, you can't take that away from me. You can't, you know, do that or I don't see that. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about what the Word says. He says, be ye holy as I am holy, as He is holy, as Father is holy. But as he which hath called you is holy, I'm reading it again, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. So number one, it starts with our word. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And you look like, you can look at people and you can see where they're at. The eyes are the window to the soul. The glory of God, you see whether it's on a person's face or you see whether, whether it's not. There is an antichrist anointing and I've looked at many people and said yep they have an anointing it's an antichrist anointing it is upon our face we can you can look and you can tell if people are walking and living out the word of God it's on it's on your demeanor it's everything you do are you giving yourself wholly and completely to what the word of God says are you looking 
at what others do and comparing yourselves with others and then making adjustments in your life according to what everybody else is doing. The scripture says he that compares himself with others is not wise. Not a wise, not a wise uh, move. A very unwise move. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Be ye holy, for I am holy. What is holiness? Who is holy? God is holy. And who are we supposed to be like? We're supposed to be called holy too. Amen. Do we fit that description? I'm just going to lay that out there for that much, and I'm going to let you search your heart. Because you know what? We don't want to preach conform religion to this or that on the outside because it's going to do you no good if it's on the outside not on the inside but see when it's completely on the inside when you take his word in and you let it work obedience in your heart it's going to show up on the outside and that's going to be between you and god you're going to stand before him you're going to stand before him people don't compare yourself with another Compare yourself with the Word of God. Mirror the Word of God. Look into this perfect law of liberty and be set free. Be set free. Be set free. Not free to do as you please. That, that, that part of the freedom in, in, in America is messed up. That's messed up. I'm free. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. You know, this is the United States of America. Well, it was the United States of America with the freedom. I tell you what, it's vanishing away quickly. That freedom is vanishing away quickly, not for the sinner, but for the saint, for the holy one. That freedom's vanishing away. But that whole, that whole uh, pride and arrogancy of don't tell me what to do, I'm free in America. You don't want that in your spirit. You want your freedom to be found in Christ Jesus and Him alone, 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 and Him alone. And He didn't die to set you free to do whatever you thought you should do. He died to set you free to be like the Father. Hallelujah. To be just like the Father. To live out everything that the Father has called us to live out by the power of the Holy Ghost. And it's not hard when you just surrender yourself to the Holy Spirit. It's not a hard thing. It's an easy thing. Praise you, Jesus. The only time it is hard is when you're gripping on and saying, I want this. I want this. I got to have this. You know, and I've told this story before, but I feel impressed by the Holy Spirit to tell this story again. My husband had a cousin that he grew up with and he hung out all the time and together with, and they did everything together. And they spent a lot of time together. And, and uh, he, they even got saved together. They came to church, they got saved together. And I tell you, when my husband got saved, he got saved. He walked in that night, and he, he saw everybody else throw up their hands, and he threw up his hands, just like they did. He was just a little Catholic boy that, anyway, we won't go there. I want my grandkids to know about it. But anyway, um, he was a little Catholic boy, just did his own thing, but, that, but God drew his heart. We continually ministered on the streets and ministered, ministered, ministered. I mean, we just, I mean, we went over Ocean Springs and Biloxi to where there was just hardly anybody that could, could escape from hearing the gospel. And his heart was pricked and came in with his cousin, Doug, and they got saved together. And David was just sold out for God. And Doug, Doug was too, but Doug wanted something that he was holding on to and he couldn't let go of. And God deals with every person. Don't think that you're the only one that gets dealt with in the way you get dealt with. Don't think you're the only one going through this tough time because Jesus suffered all these things. Jesus suffered. God allowed him to suffer. He learned obedience through the same things he suffered, yet without sin. But the suffering taught him obedience. So don't think you're the only one that's suffering, about, suffering some stuff so you can learn obedience, because you're going to suffer some stuff so you can learn obedience. And, and do it right. Do it by the Holy Ghost so you can do it without sin too, by the Holy Spirit, not by your ability. Not by your ability, but by the Holy Spirit. 
And so then anyway, Doug, he was holding on to something. He was looking, he came to church, and he was still looking for that wife because he hadn't found, him outside, found her outside the church yet because there were, the women he hung out with, they didn't plan on getting married. They planned, planned on, you know, they were planning on sowing wild oats and doing their thing. And they weren't committed. And so he comes into the church and he's looking for that wife and he's looking for that wife. And finally he comes to a place after being there for about three years. He says, God, I'm going to give you one year to give me a wife. And if you don't give me a wife in one year, I'm going to go find me one. Well, that is a long, horrible story. A long, horrible, hell, hellish story. So bad. That wife was so bad while he was at work, you know, and I'm thinking of all the children in here, but she ran a house of ill repute with her daughter from her first, I don't know, but her daughter was about 10, 11 years old. A house of ill repute while he, repute while he was at work. And then they had a daughter out of that. But Doug after seeking his own way, he ended up dying of AIDS at a very young age because he held on to his life. He wouldn't let go. There was just certain things in his life that he wouldn't let go of. And I, I've watched so many people, so many people come to Jesus, want to serve Jesus, but there was something they had to hold on to. You're to let go of your life. It's not ours. It's bought with a price. It's bought with a price, the price that Jesus Christ shed upon this earth. And then you can walk out a glorious life just like Jesus did. You don't have to have a life of misery. You don't have to die at a young age. You don't put demands on God. You let God, you let God work everything in your spirit. You let God do what he's doing. You don't put the demands there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. And we're just talking about the mind here. Thank you, Father. I'm just gonna, we're just going to go right here to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. I'm trying to learn how to use that thing, but I'm so used to my Bible. And we got to start in verse 9. I knew it. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. You have no idea what God's prepared for you, but I can tell you it's great things. It's great things. And it's not temporal things that are going to be a moment in this life, but it's great things in all eternity that he's prepared for you. Eyes not seen nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man, but, but, God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit. God reveals these things unto us by his spirit as we walk it out by the spirit and not by our ability not by our mind but god has revealed them unto us by his spirit for the spirit searches all things yea the deep things of god how many want to know the deep things of god how many want to get inside and know what god's doing and what he's saying let the Holy Spirit lead you. Let the Holy Spirit lead you into all truth. Let the Holy Spirit reveal his word to you. You are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. The word, you're clean through the word, the word that he has spoken. That's how we're clean. Let him reveal that purity and the holiness of his word as he spoke it over you. Let him reveal it to you by his spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father.
Romans chapter 12. Going back to the mind. Going back to the mind. Because I, I really feel like that we need to go over this and talk about this because this is where, as again I said, people get stuck by the mind. And I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourselves a living sacrifice, which is holy and acceptable unto the Lord. Here we go, that holy and acceptable unto the Lord. Living sacrifice that you yielding up. That's every time the Lord puts his finger on something in your life and says, yield it up, you say, here I am, Lord, I'm your living sacrifice. I am just your, I am your sacrifice on the altar. I get up, you know, maybe we need to visualize us getting up, crawling up on the altar and laying down and say, here I am, Lord, send your fire. Burn up everything that's my own ability, my own will, my own desire, and cause me, Father, by the Holy Spirit, to surrender my will completely and totally to you that I'm not living my own life, but I'm living, I'm living the life that you've called me to live. Praise you, Jesus. And be not conformed to this world. What has the church done? I mean, I'm not going to even ask how many people in this church have read Leviticus, you know? Just that, that book. Because, I mean, that's, that's a tough one to read. And I mean, I can point out several people that I know have and studied the book of Le Leviticus. But, you know, it's, it's Genesis through Revelation that we've given ourselves to the Word. And not just quickly going through it. I mean, that's, that's, you know, a good start. And thank God for that. But just really giving yourself to the Word to find out who God is because we're supposed to be just like Him. Be not conformed to this world. The church is conformed to this world. People, this is why America's in the state it's in. is because what the church has done. Because the church was not renewed in their mind. They did not allow their mind to be renewed by the Spirit. But they held on to their thinking. They held on to their own life. And they weren't transformed by the renewing of their mind. That we could all prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. That's what we're to be proving. What's acceptable to God? What's His perfect will? That's what we're to live out. And thank you, Jesus, as we just talked. As Jesus offered himself up through the Spirit, we can offer ourselves up through the Spirit. As he was obedient and that perfect sacrifice, that lamb without spot or blemish, so can we be. Because he was the one that came to show us how to do it and we're to follow Christ. We're to live as he lives. If we say that we belong to him, we're to live even as he lived. And he offered himself up. He learned obedience to the things he suffered. He, he laid down his life. When, when man was persecuting him, when they came out against him, he did not hold on to his own life, but he spoke forth the word of God, and he declared some very serious things. He preached some really good sermons to those scribes and Pharisees. He said, you liars, you hypocrite. Your father is the devil. You, you know, you just twofold a child of hell. <laughs> And that's what, you, that's what you're making anyway. By crossing over land and sea, you're making proselytes, and they're a twofold child of hell more than you are. But they will receive greater damnation. They, they've already received so many of them because they would not surrender to God. They've already received their reward, and they had a greater damnation because they were supposed to be the leaders of the people. And we have it, we have it in, our, in, our, in our country today. You know, and... And everybody would sit back and say, I would not do what Eve did. I would not do what Adam did. I would not do what the prophets of old did. That's what they were saying in Jesus' time. They were saying, Abraham is our father. And Jesus said, you killed and stoned every prophet I sent to you. You persecuted. And they're like, we wouldn't have done what the prophets did. And, and Jesus said, well, you're doing it. I mean, they couldn't get it because they were so blinded in religion. We're not in about religion. We have nothing to do with religion. We don't want religion. We want relationship. We want fellowship. We want communion with the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We want him real and living on the inside of us, pouring out of us. Religion is over in the Sudan fighting the Muslims. Religion is taking up arms and they're just over there just killing each other. Over religion, the Muslim religion, and they call it Christian, 
And I'm like, man, I don't even want to use Christian. I want to use saint, holy one. Christian's supposed to be Christ-like. Jesus didn't take up arms. He said, if you live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword. If you're going to pick up the sword and you're going to fight with the sword, then that's how you're going to die. That is the scripture. That is written down. That is for you to take a hold of. If you're going to live by the sword, prepare to die by it. But Jesus laid down his life. He laid down his life. And he loved. Where the Spirit of God is, there's love. There's overwhelming love. And you rather bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to that person that's about to kill you and let the light shine. Because you know if you shoot them, they're going to go to hell right then and there. The love of God is more about somebody getting into heaven than it is about saving your own life. And that's why we have Christians all around the world today in prison, in jail, being tortured for the gospel of Jesus Christ because they would not fight in this natural life. Like Moses, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter because he rather suffer the afflictions with his own people, with the people of God, than rather enjoy the temporal moment of sin for this very short season because he was looking way be, uh, above this life. We, our thoughts, our minds need to be transformed to the real, real word of God and the will of God, knowing that we are not living for this moment. People are just trying to gather and to store up for what they can have and what their children can have. And I understand that as a parent, I want to be able to leave an inheritance for my children. But I tell you what, in the day and the hour we live in, in the day and the hour we live in, it's all about just getting the gospel out and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ But we could, because we don't know how long we have. Like I said, what will you do with your life if there's only one year left for you to do what God's called you to do? For you to live out your life, will you live it for yourself? Will you go and see how much fun you can have? Will you have the most fun that you possibly can have before the end comes? Or will you see souls brought into the kingdom of Jesus Christ so you can stand before the Father with eternal riches? Will you lay up your treasures in heaven? If you knew, if you wrote it down and said, one year from now, it is over. It is over. You know, we're to live our life like tomorrow it's it. Tomorrow Jesus comes. That's how he told us to live our life. Not for the moment of today. And he promises that if we do, if we do this first, if we put him first, if we do the things of the kingdom first, he's going to take care. He's going to take care of all those things. He's going to take care of your children. He's going to bless them. You know, and it's, it's like, it's God-likeness for us want, to want to bless our children. Because God wants to bless us. You think about how much you want to bless your children and how much you want to do for your children and how much you want them to enjoy things in life and, and you want them to have it better than you had it and you didn't have it that bad. Let me tell you, you weren't in a third world country and food wasn't just the biggest thing in your life to just be able to get some food. So you didn't have it that bad, but you want your children to have it better. How much more the Father? And as the Father sees that we're just obedient to him. How much more is Father going to take care of all that we have need of? Oh, praise you, Jesus. Praise you, precious Holy Spirit. Glory to your name, Lord. Glory to your name, Lord. Praise you, Father. I'm going to try this thing again here. John 17, 17 through 19. And again, it's fortifying. I just want to get through the, some of these scriptures tonight because there's people that need them. There's people that need to get a hold of this. Sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is truth. This is where you find the truth. This is your fortification. The word of God is your fortification. It's your fortress. He's your high tower. He's the one that you shield yourself with. If the enemy comes out against you, don't throw yourself down on the ground and ball and squall and give up. 
Get up and run to your high tower. Get up and run to the Word and fortify yourself in the Word and say, Father, ha, ha, I'm going to walk this out by the Holy Spirit. Lord, the enemy may have come after me because I was standing in the realms of your presence. It, you know, it's, it's not people that are just sitting on the row most of the time, not engaging anywhere that, that uh, have the problem. It's people that are engaging in the kingdom that have the enemy come out against you. So don't think it's strange. Don't think it's a strange thing that the enemy's coming out against you, that you're battling with things. Realize it's because you're engaging. You've got to push forward. You're not going to back up. You're not going to agree with the enemy. You're not going to agree with what he says. But you're going to sancti be sanctified through that word. Sanctified. Jesus sanctified himself so we could be sanctified. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I send them. He didn't say go run, hide in the corner just so you could make it. He sent us into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself that they might be sanctified through the truth. And now 1 Peter. And this is where I was going while ago and I didn't read it. I just got part of it. 1 Peter 13 through 16. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Or did I read that part? I did read that part. I'll... Gird up the loins of your mind. See, that's it right there. That's it. That's where, that's what we, we must do when the enemy comes out against us and tells us that we are defeated, that, that the, Satan has his hand, his upper hand on us. We made a mistake and, you know, he's just going to, you know, beat, 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 pound, pound, pound and try to take you down. We gird up the loins of our mind and we put on the truth of the Word of God. We realize what Jesus has done and we stand up and we run after God. We refuse to give up. We refuse to go to hell. I'm not going to hell. I am not going to hell. I am not going to hell. I'm not going to hell. I mean, for so many years of my Christian life, I haven't, th I, I haven't thought very much about hell because I've been so busy thinking about heaven. I've been so th busy thinking about how much Jesus loves me and how much I love Jesus. They didn't think much about hell, but I tell you what, people need to think a little bit of hell. Hell is an eternal place, first of all, without the presence of God. First of all, it's utter, be utterly being cut off from the presence of God and it's utter darkness. I don't like utter darkness. I mean, utter darkness to where no moon, no stars, the night's too dark for me. I like light. I like living in the light. But to be cut off from the presence of God? To be totally cut off? You know, now the goodness of God is upon man. He causes his rain and his sun to shine on the good and the evil. He shows forth his mercy. He shows, for, shows forth his goodness to everyone upon the earth today. He allows every person that is alive to breathe his breath because his breath came from him into man. That's how breath got started. He breathed into man and man became a living soul. So every person, I don't care what you call yourself, an atheist, you don't believe in nothing or this or whatever. You know, that's the new thing with the young people. I don't believe in anything. I don't care what you say. Just take in a deep breath. That's God's breath. And he's allowing you to breathe it. And one day he's going to say, my breath come back to me. My spirit come back to me. And many souls will spend eternity in hell. But the spirit of God will come back to him. And the soul will go to hell. For which the spirit is dead in every man upon the earth unless they have come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And then that's when you're born of the spirit. That's when the spirit becomes alive. And until then, you are dead in your trespasses and sin. There is no life in you. There's no reality in you until you come to that place of making that decision that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. And then you're born into the spirit realm. And then you can be able to understand the things of the spirit. And until then, you can't understand the things of the spirit. Until then, they're foolishness to you. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and 5. For the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal. Now realize, 
as I was saying, we're in a battle. And the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal, but they're mighty. They're mighty, they're powerful. Don't you be afraid of the enemy. You hide in the Holy Ghost. You go fill, you get filled up. You get on your knees and you get filled up with the Holy Ghost for the weapons are, of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. Through God to the pulling down of these satanic powers of darkness, these strongholds, casting down imaginations. What do we do with imaginations? We cast them down. We gird up the loins of our mind and we bring every thought into captivity unto the obedience of Christ, which is the Word of God. Those thoughts are brought into obedience to the Word of God. We don't just sit there and go, all these thoughts, this must be who I am and what I am, and, you know, just always repenting. You know, make up things to repent about. The enemy just continually throwing in those, those darts. No, we capture. We capture those darts through the Spirit by the Word of God. And we destroy them. They can't affect us. Don't agree with the thoughts that the enemy is putting against you. Don't agree with them. Agree with what the Word of God says. Live this out. Casting down imaginations and every high thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing in captivity every thought unto the obedience of Christ. So, if the enemy is not telling you that you're washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, that you're a saint, that you're a holy one, that he has made you holy, he's made you righteous and pure, and he's constantly beating you up, you need to bring those thoughts into captivity and say, no, this is what the Word of God says about me. This is who I am. I have decided to follow Jesus. And Satan, you pack your bag and you leave. You take you, take you and all of your little friends with you and you get out in Jesus name because I'm more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus I'm seated together in heavenly places with Christ Jesus I'm heir and joint heir with Christ Jesus the Holy One the righteousness and the enemy's not going to distract me with his stupidity beware of the enemy's devices okay he pulled that one on you once he pulled it on you twice he pulled it on you three times would you move on now move on Compare yourself with the Word of God, not with the lies of the enemy that he assails against your mind. When the enemy assails sin against your mind, tries to begin to tell you you need something that is sin and of the flesh and of this world, you simply say, the Word of God says, all those that do these things shall have their part in the lake of fire. So therefore, Jesus! I thank you for the Holy Ghost that strengthens me right now. I will not participate. I will not participate. The thing about it is that we need to be aware of is that the enemy starts with little bitty things that you allow him to do in your life. He starts with the things that, that, that seem small. They, you kind of pass off, and you don't, you don't guard yourself again, but you need to be careful. You need to be careful that you're walking in the Spirit. Because if you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. But if you're not walking in the Spirit, you're going to find yourself getting caught over here in your mind and in your ability instead of God's ability, instead of His ability. You know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 through 16, I think I was over there just a bit, bit ago, but see, we find right here that we have the mind of Christ. But God has, I didn't finish reading all of this, God's revealed all these deep things to us, which things also we speak, not in the words with man which wisdom teaches, but Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural mind, it doesn't receive the things of God, the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto the natural mind. See, so you, you get over here and you're living, in, you're living in your ability and you're hanging out with what the enemy is putting against your mind and, and you're agreeing with the enemy that you're not washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, that you're not heir and joint heir with Jesus Christ, that you've not been cleansed through the word, you're not clean through the word that he's spoken unto you, and you begin to agree with the enemy, then you're going to begin to look right here in the natural mind where the things of God are foolishness to him. And 
You cannot know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. If we walk in the Spirit, if we're discerning things spirit, by, by the Spirit, we have the mind of Christ, but we have the mind of Christ. If we're walking in the Spirit, we're not going to fulfill the lust of the flesh. So how to keep yourself out of fulfilling the lust, lust of the flesh is very simple. Walk in the Spirit. And every person in this place could say, I have heard this over and over again, but I want every person in this place to reckon with yourself at this moment and say, are you walking 100% of the time in the Spirit? 100% of the time yielded over to the realms of the Spirit. 100% of the time, not allowing the enemy to take you down for any moment. There's not a whole lot of people in here that can say that, I'm going to tell you. Because you get under the battle, and you forget about what God's done for you. And that's why we're here, and that's why it's such a necessity to be in this place, to be encouraged and strengthened and push forward, and, and, and have that unity coming together, saying, we're going to walk this out, we're going to live it. We're going to be everything that God's called us to be. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Philippians 2, chapter 2, starting with verse 1. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done in strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem others better than themselves. Look not unto every man of his own things, but every man look on the things of other, others. Let this mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus. We've got mind, mind, mind in here again and again. Lowliness of mind, humility. Humility is the key. When you get puffed up and just go, I got it, and, you know, and we're not just always loving and humbling ourselves and serving one another and having, you know, the spirit of, a, of humility toward each other and letting, letting other people speak into our lives. When, when we think that we're more than what we ought, we need to think again. We need to think that the Lord will bring us down to humility because that's where he is. He lives with the broken and the contrite spirit. Let this mind be also in you, which was in, in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Everybody wants to stop there. Thought it, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who thought it not robbery to be equal with God. And you know, God, God has brought us into that divine fellowship, and it is amazing. It is glorious. But let's go on. Who being in the form of God, oh, sorry, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made into the likeness of man. He was God, and he humbled himself and became the likeness of men, and being found and fashioned as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient. Jesus became obedient. He humbled himself, and he became obedient even unto the death of the cross. It was not an easy thing to do as a man. To think of suffering in this body is not easy. But he, through obedience, laid himself upon the altar of sacrifice. We, through obedience, if we will keep ourselves every day, there every day, because that's what Jesus did. That's how he, be, he was the spotless lamb without spot or blemish. That's how he was able to offer himself up, is because obedience. He was always willing to lay down his life at the very breath of the Father. As soon as the Father... He didn't, the Father didn't even get it out of his mouth because Jesus was the Word. And the Father just had it in his mind, and Jesus was, here I am, Father. 
He went to continually see what the Father was saying about everything. He went and continued fellowship with the Father. He didn't do anything unless he heard the Father um, say it and do it. Unless he saw the Father do it or heard the Father say it. He learned as a man to be obedient completely without one error to the Father. That is our call. If we say we are Christ, we are to walk even as he walked. We need to stay in the Holy Ghost. We need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost every morning when we get up. We need to be so full of the Holy Ghost. Amen? And so many people want to put away the Holy Ghost and put them in the back closet, but I'm telling you what. Sorry. I'm telling you what. I've got to live my life out with Jesus by the Holy Ghost. We must. We must look at it with fear and trembling before God. You know, like Moses did when they came to Mount Zion. Because if they even touched the mountain, they were to be killed. And Moses said, I do, I do exceedingly fear and quake. But the real, reality of God, yes, we are come we are come unto Mount Zion, that place where God, God just opens up. Basically, I'll just cut it short. God just opens up and he allows us to go before the holies of holies. But he still, we must, we must work out our salvation with fear and trembling. We must work it out with fear and trembling. We must not count ourselves as to have obtained, but that we will obtain by the Holy Spirit. If we don't weary in our well-doing and we don't faint, we will walk it out. Wherefore, God also highly exalted him and has given him a name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Whether you want to now or you want to when it's too late, you will confess the name of Jesus Christ. Every person will confess the name of Jesus Christ. They will bow of things in heaven and things of earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, as you've always obeyed, not in my presence only, and again, you know, I, I, I preached on this last Wednesday night, as you've obeyed all the time. Philippians was a church that was always obedient, never walking high-minded, but always in humility, always obeying. You know, when you obey, you're a humble person. And how many parents love their children just to obey? Isn't it so peaceful when your child just always obeys? Isn't that glorious? And you know, children, you can obey your parents by the Holy Ghost. If you're having a hard time because you don't think something's fair, you can just go, go to your room and pray in the Holy Ghost. And parents, if you have that spirit and demeanor in your home, you will change your home. I wish I would have gotten a whole lot more of this when I was younger and I was raising my kids. I mean, I was like, we're going to serve God or, uh, you know... I brought you into this world and I will take you out type thing. You're going to serve God. We're serving God. This family's serving God. That's the way it is. My mom, my mom told my dad, which my dad's a preacher, and he would preach nonstop. But, you know, there were times that he wasn't preaching. And my mom's like, what are you doing? This is Sunday morning. We're going to church. And, you know, you go through hard times as preachers too. And mom's like, Get in the car. We're going to church. You would think, wait a minute. She's the wife. She's not supposed to have authority over the husband like that. Well, if he ain't being the spiritual leader, step up to the plate. If he is not being the spiritual leader that he's supposed to be, then he's negated his responsibility, and he needs a good woman to kick him in the butt. Behind. Excuse me. And help him get to that place that he's supposed to be. Don't enable him. Help him. And she, my, my mom, she always said, she said this to me many times. She said, I told your father that I'll go anywhere in the world for him. I'll do anything he wants me to do. I'll be a servant to him. And my mother was an amazing wife, amazing servant. She served more than any person I know upon the planet I have ever met to this day. She served. She served my father. But she says, buddy, I won't go to hell with you. That's one place I won't go. And she's like, she was after him. She was like, kick it in gear, buddy. Kick it in gear. You be the leader, you be the leader to this home. 
you know. So women, if your husband's getting, if your wife's, um, husband, <laughs> if your wife's getting after you, kick it in gear. Don't go, woman, listen to me, obey. You know, just go, hey amen, you're right. I wasn't, I wasn't making the right direction in the spirit right then, and I needed you to come along and push me. You know, there's a lot of men that don't need that, but there's a lot of men that do. There's a lot of men that are good leaders. But women, if he's not being a good leader at the moment, shift it in gear for him. Take off. Move forward. Refuse to back up. Hallelujah. That's a good wife. That's a good wife. One that's like, we're going to heaven. The children are going to heaven. We're doing what God's called us to do. And it doesn't matter how bad it looks. It doesn't matter what, how the enemy's coming out against us. We are going to heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I, I'll tell you, women, if your husband is not being the spiritual leader of the house, then he can't lead you spiritually. You know, and I'm not talking because he, you know, made one little mistake. I'm talking about if he is sitting down and he is not being the spiritual leader of the house. He's not leading the family to church. He's not leading the family in the things of the kingdom. He's negating his responsibility. Then you, you have to step it up. And so spiritually, you know, if, if your husband, if you, you're married to a man that is walking in sin and ungodliness and he's not being the spiritual leader, God will give you the grace. He will give you the grace to lead your family spiritually. And there's a lot of good women that have brought their families into the kingdom of heaven when their husband wasn't being a good leader. They pushed forward and, and, and they took a hold of the things of kingdom. And, you know, it's not that you don't honor your husband, you don't respect your husband, because the Bible commands us to do that. We are to honor and respect. But if he's not leading spiritually, if he's leading in the ways of Satan and powers of darkness, you're not supposed to follow that. You're supposed to get up and walk on with God. Because like my mom said, I'll go anywhere in the world with you, but I will not go to hell with you. My mom made up her mind when she was 10 years old, she wasn't going to hell. She heard a sermon that ended it for her. And my mom, when she started something, she finished it. And I tell you what, she ran her wet race. She was a mighty woman of God. She did great things in the kingdom. And she's in her reward, enjoying herself. Thoroughly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we're all looking forward to that day. You know, Paul was racing to that day. He's like, I fought the good fight. I've kept the faith. It's time for me to go home. I know that, I, you know, this prophet is prophesying that uh, my hands are going to be tied. And, you know, he took his girdle and he wrapped up his hands and wrapped him up and said, you're going to be bound like this. And Paul goes, yep, but I'm going. Yep. I fought the fight. I'm ready to go home. I put you in remembrance. I stirred you up as long as I was here. I, I did my work, and now you take up the torch because I'm going to my reward. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Going to the reward. Reaping the reward of heaven because we fought the good fight. That is, that is what we are looking for not for getting slipped up by the enemy, but staying in the realms of the Holy Spirit and not living our own life. Romans 8, 7 through 18, we can't talk about yielding ourselves to the Spirit and, 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 and our mind without going into Romans chapter 8. It's just impossible. I have to go here. Because the carnal mind, starting in verse 7, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. And I could back up. And we could read the whole chapter, but we'll just try to get to this point. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be, so that they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. So that carnal mind has no place in your life. Don't go back there. Don't live in that realm. Realize the place that God has brought you and live over here in the realms of the Spirit. Because the carnal mind is the enemy of God. It's the enemy of God. Every person that has not been born of the Spirit and is living in the carnal natural mind, fulfilling the lust of the flesh, is the enemy of God. 
If you claim that you are a Christian and you are living in the carnal, natural mind, fulfilling the lusts of the flesh, you are the enemy of God. Now, do you believe that the enemy of God is going to go to heaven? Man, it's quiet. No! The enemy of God will not go to heaven. I don't care what you've said. You must live in obedience to the Word of God to go to heaven. We've got to have this so rooted and grounded. The enemy would like to come and steal the Word of God out of our spirits. We've got to have this so rooted and grounded in our spirits that we do not let go of it for one moment of our life, that we live this out every moment. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwells in, in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Christ from the dead dwell in you, dwell in you, dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body. Hallelujah. Your mortal bodies by the Spirit. So you are quick and you are made alive through the blood of Jesus Christ and the Spirit, the eternal Spirit that Jesus offered himself up through. He offered himself up to God through the eternal Spirit. You must put yourself upon the altar of sacrifice through the Holy Spirit. And you've got to realize that shall we continue in sin that grace may abound. God forbid, don't we know that he that is dead to sin does not live anymore, any longer in that realm, Romans chapter 6. You don't live there. He that is dead to sin does not live in the realm of sin anymore. That like as Christ, he died unto sin once. Even so, like as Christ, was, he died and he was buried and raised up together again. Likewise, we are, die. We lay our life on that altar of sacrifice. So if the enemy tries to get you off the altar of sacrifice, say, uh-uh. You know, he may capture your mind for a moment. He may draw you away into some form or thing for a moment. But you run back up onto that altar and you get back up there and I don't care how many times you have to get back up there. You saying, God, I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to serve you. I'm going to live it out. I am I'm yours. I want heaven to be my home. I want the realms of the Spirit to be my home. I don't want to burn an eternal flame of torture forever and ever with people screaming out all their ungodliness and their wickedness and their filth and their torture. And that's a bad hell. But the worst part to me is completely separated from the presence of God. I can't even imagine that separation. I don't ever want to imagine that separation. That's horrible. Horrible. Completely all light of holiness and righteousness taken from you. Oh, Father. Father. Colossians, and I'm going to read this real quick. Colossians 1, 21 through 23. And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy. This is what he's done for you. You were an enemy of God, but he's reconciled your mind. He's reconciled your soul. He's reconciled your spirit. And if you'll just walk it out and be obedient. to present you holy, unblameable, unreprovable in his sight. If you continue in the faith, so you failed, get back up and continue. Amen? Amen. Run. Run this race with Paul. Get back up and continue. If you continue in the faith, grounded, settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, wherefore I, Paul, am made a minister. Be not moved. Be rooted, be grounded, be settled. Settle it out. Settle it out. Settle it out that you're not going to allow the enemy to have you for one moment. Right now, here tonight, there's some people that need to settle it out. We've got a few people in here that do not know this grace and this goodness of God, this mercy, what he's done for you, and that he's called you to live 
holy and righteous. We've got a few people that are living in some condemnation. Repent. Repent. Get up and move on with God. His grace is sufficient for you. He will take you. He will take you from this place of the up and the down and the failure, and he will launch you over into the realms of his glory deeper and deeper and deeper, and you'll go from glory to glory to glory to glory to glory to glory. Don't give up. Don't be weary. Don't give up. Don't be weary. Don't give up. Don't give up. Push in. Take a hold of God. Take a hold of God. Take a hold of his word. Let his word be living and alive on the inside of you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, that your word goes deep down on the inside of every person in this place. And it pierces the heart of every person in this place. And it breaks every yoke and every bondage and every stronghold. Right now, in Jesus' name, Satan, you let go of God's people. You get your hands off the property of God. In Jesus' name, I break every lying power of darkness, every bit of deception that has tried to draw men away from this glorious realm of your spirit. We thank you, Jesus, that the yokes are broken right now. We set you free in Jesus' name. We set you free in Jesus' name. We set you free in Jesus' name. We set you free. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it now. Receive it now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, for your goodness that will strive with the hearts and the souls of men. Oh, God, we thank you for your mercy, Father, that will not give up, will not let go until it's over. Oh, God, your mercy that endures forever and ever. Your goodness, oh, God. Your goodness, oh, God, that leads men to repentance again and again if it takes. If it takes it, oh, God, to bring them to that place that they will walk in all that Jesus paid for us to walk in. Hallelujah. 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 The glory of heaven, the glory of heaven that breaks every yoke. Right now, yokes broken. Yokes are broken. Yokes are broken in this place. Yokes are broken in this place in Jesus' name. Whatever you have need of, God is ministering right now to meet that need. You put that petition before God right now. What do you have need of? You put that petition before Him. And also others that don't have a, a specific need. You pray and you intercede for the souls that are weighing in the balance right now. There are souls weighing in the balance right now. And we want to intercede right now in Jesus' name that that word goes deep into their heart and it breaks the yoke of going back and forth and being condemned and not coming and just getting back on the altar. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, now there are several needs in this place. There are several needs in this place. There's people that need to be healed in their body, and they haven't pressed in for that. And that's what I wanted to preach on tonight was healing. That's what you know I wanted to press into to, to not only have healing in our bodies and every person in this place, but to walk in over in that realm of signs and wonders and miracles. But there's some things that the Holy Spirit wanted to, need, to, to, to do here tonight and things that he wanted to minister and catch people up on and bring them over into getting some things broken off of their life. And so that's what the Holy Spirit is saying. Now we're, we're just going to press in and we're going to see these things broken. We're going to see people healed. We're going to see things that have been hanging on to your life, broken off of you tonight in Jesus' name. You're not going to go back there anymore. You're not going to go back there anymore. So I want anyone that needs prayer for any reason any reason to come. I don't want to call people particularly out for anything because, you know, it's nobody's business right here, right now. But I want, I want uh, every person that wants prayer, and especially anybody that's had a struggle and a battle, and the enemy's tried to beat you up and condemn you, and the enemy's tried to hold you back from being everything God's called you to be. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we're going to see these things broken off your life. You're not gonna, you're not gonna, you're not gonna hold back. You're gonna run. You're gonna run. You're gonna run. You're gonna run in Jesus' name. 
These things are broken in Jesus' name. The glory of heaven in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We're, gonna, we're not going to have up and down and back and forth. We're going to have moving forward. Moving forward. Moving forward in Jesus' name. Just begin to worship him and praise him and thank him for what he has already done for you. It is already yours. It already belongs to you. You just moved up here. You just stood up here to go deeper and to have that thing completely broken off. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Just begin to thank him. Begin to thank him. Begin to thank him for your petition. Begin to thank him. Begin to thank him for it. Begin to thank him and believe him that he has finished it, that he has done the work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that I'm a more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who loved me. I am more than a conqueror, more than a conqueror, more than a conqueror. I thank you, Jesus, for the healing in my body. I thank you, Jesus, that healing is the children's bread and it belongs to me. I'm not letting the enemy push me around in this area anymore. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, for the souls that we place before you, God, that we're standing in the gap for. Right now, every person in this place agrees for the those that are lost and without God are in destitute need of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to come and rescue them out of their mess that they've got themselves in. In Jesus' name, Father, we take a hold of those souls. We take a hold of those sons and those daughters. We take a hold of those friends, those loved ones, in Jesus' name. And we pray them over into the kingdom right now. We stand. We stand for their souls in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father, for your healing anointing. Thank you, Father, for your healing anointing. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your healing anointing right here, right now, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Jesus.